Welcome to Coast Guard Training Center, Cape May. My name is Commander Young and I will be your Master of Ceremonies for tonight's Sunset Parade. <coughs> Training Center, Cape May was originally named Coast Guard Receiving Center, Cape May, when it opened on May 31st, 1948. In 1982, Training Center, Cape May became the service's only recruit training center. Nestled between the Atlantic Ocean and Cape May Harbor, Training Center, Cape May once belonged to the U.S. Marines and the U.S. Navy and was an instrumental training area for troops during World War I and World War II. Each Coast Guardsman understands the importance of our organization and has recited our Coast Guard ethos on a daily basis. The Coast Guard ethos was derived from the Coast Guard's capstone doctrine, Pub 1, and commits our newest members to the Coast Guard's character, culture, and core values of honor, respect, and devotion to duty. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Coast Guard Recruit Battalion. <laughs> it is my pleasure to introduce the commanding officer, Captain Gibbons, who will offer his remarks. Well, good evening, folks. On behalf of the Training Center staff and the Coast Guard Recruit Battalion, I'd like to welcome you to our second Sunset Parade of this year. Tonight's parade is in honor of Independence Day. Though the holiday itself will fall near midweek, it's the kind of event that brings families and communities together to celebrate the blessings that our form of government has secured for generations. Since the rest of the nation is gathering together with family, we thought we'd do so as well. So we're also honoring our closest family members tonight, our Coast Guard Auxiliary, and the immense contributions that they make to enable the Coast Guard to better deliver upon its statutory missions in service to the American public. We are pleased that all of you have joined us for this evening's ceremony. So this week as we gather for parades and fireworks displays to commemorate the birth of our nation, which we trace back to the 4th of July in 1776, just 90 miles up the bay, from here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It was an inauspicious birth, embodied only in a declaration, a commitment to key principles, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that launched a national venture whose future was far from certain. So tonight, it's more than fitting to commemorate the birth of our nation right here at the birthplace of our enlisted corps, where 84% of our workforce gets its start. We are eager to parade the recruit battalion before you because they constitute not just the lifeblood sustaining our present day workforce, but our future as well. Because they'll be the ones to perpetuate a lineage of ready, relevant, and responsive service to the American public that can be traced back nearly to our nation's inception 
when, just a year after the Constitution was enacted, one of our founding fathers and a framer of our new form of government, Alexander Hamilton, brought into existence a revenue cutter service, the nucleus of today's modern Coast Guard. So today's recruits embark on a similar journey, making a declaration, taking a sacred oath to defend that same constitution against all enemies. But they too have to embark on that initial struggle to demonstrate proficiency in our governing principles of honor, respect, and devotion to duty, making sacrifices to gain victory over themselves, equipping them to perpetuate the unique service character that America has come to rely upon its Coast Guard since 1790. Once they leave us here at the training center and report to their first operational unit, it does not take long for them to come in contact with, encounter, and appreciate the efforts of our Coast Guard Auxiliary. They're a civilian volunteer workforce that has supported the Coast Guard since 1939 when they were established by an act of Congress. The Coast Guard Auxiliary has approximately 26,000 volunteers nationwide, and each year, auxiliaries volunteer more than 2 million hours conducting a variety of Coast Guard missions. But since we're talking about family, let me brag on the work of our own Auxiliary Division 8, which consists of seven flotillas in Cape May and Atlantic counties and boasts 450 auxiliary members. In this past year, they collectively performed more than 150 hours of Coast Guard waterborne patrols, supporting routine safety and search and rescue activities, ensuring public safety at major events like the Atlantic City Air Show, the Wildwood Naval Air Show, and the open water Cape to Cape paddleboard event, among many others. They dedicated similar effort to marine safety by both educating the public and actively protecting the environment. In addition, they conducted 900 vessel examinations, representing more than 1,000 hours of effort, and volunteered as instructors, delivering 8,000 hours of preparation for mariners through boating safety classes that prevent search and rescue cases before they ever begin. But much closer to home, they taught seamanship skills to our recruits. They were instrumental to welcoming uh, the extended family of our graduates each week by preparing meals and providing tours for more than 2,000 guests. All told, just here in our two closest counties, these missions equal over 16,000 hours annually in support of the American public. To those members of our Coast Guard Auxiliary family in, the, in attendance, we thank you once again for your selfless service. So folks, please, Thank you. Join me in a round of applause for the Coast Guard Auxiliary. All right, now sit back and enjoy tonight as we celebrate our nation's birthday and recognize those organizations like our Coast Guard Auxiliary who selflessly and voluntarily serve to protect those principles that our founding fathers declared 243 years ago. Our fervent prayer is that God will continue to bless our nation, our service members, and all those who support them. Semper Paratus. The Drill Team and Color Guard consists of recruits selected by the ceremonial drill master to perform at a high level and can learn the complicated movements in addition to basic training. The Drill Team carries demo tries 1903 rifles and executes all movements without verbal command. So please hold your applause until the end of the routine. The Drill Team and Color Guard are trained and supervised by Petty Officer German.
Please stand for the plane of retreat and the national anthem. Uniform personnel should render the military salute. Members of veterans of the armed forces not in uniform may also render a military salute. All those present should face the flag of attention, remove your hat, and place your right hand over your heart. Battalion staff consists of Chief, Chief Blaine Pearsall from King George, Virginia, Chief Justin Mogan from Benton, Illinois, and Chief Dave Knapp from Chester, Virginia. The drill team is led by Petty Officer Jonathan German from Las Vegas, Nevada. Companies in their fourth week of training. The lead company commander is Chief Petty Officer Matthew Presco from Waterbury, Connecticut. His assistants are Chief Petty Officer Smith and Petty Officer Morris. <laughs> Petty Officer Gunn and Petty Officer Duran. The band is led by Chief Petty Officer Edward Burke from Groton, Connecticut. 